this team is exquisite in terms of the many different components, each individual member bringing their best face forward and having past successes in terms of how to run a business, how to develop concepts from start to finish and how to deliver. Like in our case, hardware, which is super exciting. And, and we have David on board, DL, who worked on the Beats headphones. For me, I'm really good at marketing, music, branding. So I come up with a lot of the vision, but I can never sit here and say, I know everything about crypto or like tokenomics, but that's why we have Devin to carry that load. And we have I'm Complex and we have Cro Magnus who are honestly, in my opinion, top 10 artists in the space, guaranteed. And so I just wanted to really bring on the best of the best for this project. Thank you everybody for joining us. We have two very, very special guests today. We have Cro Magnus and Cockberry. Let me give a quick introduction for those of you who don't know. So Cro is an illustrator and a multidiscipline artist, a musician and a b-boy. You've done a lot of incredible work in the NFT space with art, with Oni Force, and obviously now with San. And then Kaku, you're an Oni One Ka, you're a DJ, a producer, and you're the founder of San. And that's what we're going to be talking about today. So how are you guys doing today? What's going on, Cro Magnus? Things are great. Getting my some house paint done today and working on some art. Excited about. And I'm stoked my boy Kaku made it to Bali today. So things are looking bright. Yes. Tell us about getting into Bali. Did, did I go smoothly? How are you doing? Yeah, so I, mean, I was I was talking I was chopping shop with you guys earlier. So I'm actually out here in Bali right now. I flew in literally like an hour and a half ago or something just to like make sure I made this uh, you know this chat with you guys. But basically, what happened was I got like I got pulled at like at the immigration because my agent sent the wrong passport in because I, I like had to change my new passport recently, and uh, I almost couldn't get in. Right, so I was like in the back room just hanging out there, and they found out I was a DJ. So they made me pull up my YouTube, my Spotify and started like blasting it in the office. And they're like, oh, your music's pretty good, you know? So they're like, yo, in order for you to get in, all right, just take a picture with us and like put it on your story. So I was like, all right, dude, listen, if I'm going to be able to get in, I'll do anything. It's all good. So I had a little photo shoot with them. Uh, you can go check it out on my Instagram. It's pretty funny. So, <laughs> so I'm here. I'm here. I made it. That's incredible. We're glad you made it. We wanted to start off with talking about how you guys met. So you guys have been in the NFT space for close to two years, a year and a half. And how did you guys make that connection and, and where and how did you guys meet? Kaku, let's start with you. Yeah, so I hopped into the like the Web3 space like early last year, like around February. So I got onboarded by my friends who started Origin Protocol, right? So hmm. this was like right before like they, they really like started build, building the hype with like that Blau sale, right? That like hit like 11 million or something like that, right? So... So basically like a month before that, I met, I met up with the guys and they were like, yo, you'd be like a perfect fit for like Web3. And I, I, I hadn't, look, I've never been in crypto, right? I've n I didn't even know what NFTs were. So I started doing my research. And I think like during that time, like Nifty Gateway was pretty much like the biggest platform, right? And they were selling like a lot of the one-on-one arts and, mm -hmm. you know, getting a lot of like famous artists like uh, onboarded. And that, that's, that's where it was like, I started understanding the collective, like the collectible elements of like what's called NFTs, right? And so that like really like piqued my interest. And for like the, I, I would say like the, for a few months, I was just kind of like researching and seeing how like things were like, you know, like like what things were happening in like Web3 and stuff, right? That, that's kind of like how I started, right? And then I think how I, how I met Crow Magnus was, is that we were both heavily involved in like mm -hmm. the Only Force project when it first dropped. So, I mean, this is all public now, but basically I'm Complex and I, like we've been friends IRL for many, many years. So when I used to like do shows out in Jakarta, he would just pull up. We have a lot of mutual friends and we just kept in touch over the years. And I think like basically, basically like Only Force was the first like PFP project. So this is like right after like Board Apes started blowing up, right? And I started understanding like the community element of like mm. what the NFTs were like becoming. And I think like with Only Force, I hopped in not just because of Brian, but I just wanted to like get involved with the community. And so I actually like didn't even say who I was or anything. I actually like grinded like my way to like getting a whitelist and everything. And, and really like, I had so much fun doing it. And so I was like, obviously like super like, you know, hyped about the project and everything. And then I, I found out Crow Magnus is like another you know artist that was like, you know, illustrating for, for the, you know, for project. Right. And I was like, man, this, this stuff is dope. So I think like I, I reached out to Crow and I was like, bro, man, you're, you're insane. Like, you know, like I've worked with a lot of artists over the years just because I'm a DJ. 
but like i'm like this this is like some next level like art like this is like super dope shit and i think like we've been, we've just been talking like you know as friends like you know obviously like you know back channels and stuff and i was always approaching him about like doing a project together and eventually it became son but and again like we're probably going to deep dive into it a little bit later but like i just like respect his art like and last year when i was like djing for the community we just came up with the idea like hey crow like why don't you start illustrating like live you know because we have a green screen and it would be like a super different element mm -hmm. to like something that no one's ever seen before you know and it just like took off right away like i think the first show we did everyone was just like wow this is insane like crow's like illustrating live you're like djing live this is just like tying like music and like art together you know and i think like we we, we kind of like did you know a, a good run of it last year but now that we control our own project we're like really trying to like scale it up and like take it to the next level yeah that's kind of like our history i guess very cool and we're gonna jump into like you said san and some of the inspiration and <clears throat> you guys lessons you've learned but Cro magnus how long have you guys been working on san in the background because that's something that i've seen come up quite a lot at least six months because of i think we had our first big group meeting in la we had a really nice dinner and i think we, we I would pretty much have met everybody for the first time in real life. I was kind of freaking out because I'd, I'd never met I'm Complex before. So it was my first time meeting Brian too. So I was nervous as hell and I, I didn't know. And we ended up going to like, a, it was like a Brazilian steakhouse. I don't eat, I don't eat, I don't eat meat. So I was like, I just felt all like, oh man, this is not good. I'm not going to be able to eat. I'm going to be stressed out. I'm panicked because I don't, I hope I make a good impression with all these people. And I've never met Brian before. And he's like, you know, the, the king of Oni Force. And we ended up having a great time. And it was, and I kicked, I hit it off with, with everyone who was on my end of the table. That was like easy conversation distance. It was, it was like a, it was like a great fit. And so that was, I, yeah, probably about six to eight, eight months ago now. I know we had a couple moments early on in the project where people were busy and it hadn't quite formed exactly into into something that we knew we could you know take the next steps on so there was a lot of conceptualization early on that and it slowed down a little bit in the beginning but once we kind of realized what we were doing I, I think you know things pretty much just took off from there but I was but initially I was my biggest draw for this project was was that first meeting and just feeling like I can really connect with these people like having so many fears over not knowing how the experience would differ IRL from the clubhouse experience and, and sort of like the, the Twitter spaces experience and worried about that and having all those fears alleviated immediately because the team is really, really strong and they all have really, really, really great interpersonal skills, which are hugely important on a team. And that just shined immediately. So I, I was like, I was full steam ahead at, at like after I met them, I was like, oh, this is, this is really an opportunity, especially after reflecting off what had happened on my, you know, pr with the, our previous experience on Oni Force, which of course is where, you know, I met Kaku. I actually ended up, I actually, right. I, I, my story on Clubhouse, when I, I joined Clubhouse pretty early and Kaku was doing this effort, the, the red campaign and the red campaign was doing some NFTs and they had these different environments based off different ge geological features in, in Africa. And I had spent, I had spent some time in Kenya and I love it there. And I immediately was kind of drawn to the art. And I remember listening to him talk for the first time. And, and I was like, as screw it. I don't usually talk on clubhouse, but I went up there and I was like, I was like, yo, Kaku, I, I love your beats. I love hip hop. I love been a b-boy for a really long time. There's this awesome b-boy event in Taipei called the b-boy summit. You should go if you don't know. And he was like, oh, I know those guys, blah, blah, blah. Mm -hmm. And, and ever since sort of that moment of just being like, I like, I love DJs. I love hip hop. I love music. It's at my, the core. It's at the core of song. And that, well, I knew we were going to cross paths again. And that's after that came Oni Force and, and we, you know, we got in our right. discussions and kind of like in initial real introductions. It was, it's, it's been a ride. You mentioned Oni like multiple times, like we know you met there and everything. So now you're founders, you have your own project. So 
first of all, congrats because Sun is like I really like Sun. Disclosure: I old Sun, so but I, because I really like it, and I'm I'm happy that you are the founders of of that project. So that was one of the reasons why I also bought in because you know you were there. But like you were saying, you were involved in Oni and everything, and now you have your own project. So, what did you learn from your experience in Oni, and what are you using from that experience now that you have your own project? Like Kaku, let's let's go with you. The thing about Oni Force is, I was just like a community member, you know. Like I wasn't like a part of the project or anything. And this is like, you know, people always for some reason think I was like part of the the team, but I really wasn't. Like I was a community member, and <laughs> I was a sponsored streamer already, right? So I you I was like, hey, like、mm -hmm. I think one day I was like talking to people on the on the on the Discord, right? And I was like. Yo, I already do these like streams. Why don't we just bring some of the you know the community members and like let's just like vibe. You know what I'm saying? So and that's kind of that's kind of how it started. And it was like right around the time pre-reveal was happening, like the mint was happening. So I just I just kind of did it on my own and like naturally just everybody just started flooding into the the Twitch, and it just like started becoming something. So that's、mm -hmm. when like kind of like the original founders like hit me up and they're like, Yo, Kaku, this is dope. Can we do this like officially? So I was like, All right, yeah, why not? You know, like I'm already doing it anyway. And then slowly, it just like created like a huge buzz because no one was really doing anything like that for projects back then, right? And I think like, and I and I, I kind of like saw like a, I would say a, a vision then that man like maybe some of these Web three projects needs more entertainment. So I just started like doing it strictly for Oni Force and like little by little, you know, other projects started hitting me up. But、uh, you know, I was like committed with Oni Force obviously just because I was like part of that community. So I, I only. Did it mostly for them,、mm -hmm. but、um, you know, and 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 for the longest time, people thought I was just like a streamer, which is not true. Like I only I was only streaming because of the <laughs> pandemic. Like we couldn't tour, so we had to like figure out a way to like you know connect with our our、um, what's called like fan base and stuff. So I think like I was like doing like heavy streaming for like a couple years. Now I'm like slowly getting back into like my actual job, which is like actually touring and doing shows around the world. But you know, obviously, Son is like my baby. Like I, I created from like. From nothing, really. Like last March, I came up with like an original concept, which I, I think I'm sure I'm pretty sure we're gonna talk about with the whole like in-ear headphones and everything. And、uh, I approached Brian to like really design these things, right? Because I was like, I've been sponsored by every single like you know headphone、uh, headphone company like you can name, you know. But I've always wanted to do my own, and that's where like this whole like con concept came to be. I was like, Brian, I've known so well, I respect him. I was like, I know for sure he can design something that no one's ever seen before, and the more and more we started like coming up the the initial concept design, I was like, how can we tie this into like NFTs, you know? And I think like that question kind of led、mm -hmm. into what、uh, becoming like what Son is today, because now we're like、right. you know doing like music platforms, we're trying to do like IRL act, you know IRL activations for a community, right? And this whole listen to earn mechanics, like this stuff came way later in the line. Right, I mean, the original concept was literally I wanted to do like a ten thousand like you know randomly generated year buds basically, right? And the te the tech the tech side、mm -hmm. of it is going to be different as well, so it's going to be like Web three enabled. So that that was kind of like the original idea. I mean, I, we're definitely like a better project now with all the you know development that's happened. But you know, the original concept was really just like to do an art like year buds as like an art piece that you can like literally like put in your desk, and it's like kind of like a sculpture. Right, but you can take the sculpture and you also can listen to music.、Mm -hmm. And I was gonna make like you know obviously like music specifically for that project. That was kind of like that's、right. really like like there's not, not nothing complex about it really, you know. Yeah. Let's jump into sand more now. Let me just set the context. So, it, you started off with a free mint, ten thousand NFTs, and that's moving into a it's a soul bound. Platform play, and so I want you guys to flesh out more. Like Kaka, you mentioned, it started off with earbuds as as a generative NFT, and it's transformed、mm -hmm. to a much more larger platform play. And so, where 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 did that start, and how did Soulbound get woven into this? Well, you know, the thing is, is like I, I felt like last year and all the way up until now, the NFT scene has really just become heavily dominated with the whole PFP project, right? And a lot of like. People just like promising things that they can't really achieve, which just didn't sit well with me because, like, you know, shit. I've been I've been rugged so many times, right? Like by projects that I was like, oh man, this art is dope. They're you know promising all these utilities, blah blah blah, and it just never happens, right? So that's also why we took our time with this project. Like we we didn't want to just like overpromise and and not be able to deliver like you know the things that we wanted to deliver. So so essentially, like what happened at the beginning was 
we myself brian actually funded like self-funded the the start of the manufacturing pro process of these earbuds in the first place right and that's that's how like it like we started so like we we put in the down payment for these things got my friend dl who i've known for a very very long time he's like a legendary like manufacturer and like golden year like we just we call it in the industry and uh, it's because i used to be in manufacturing i used to and, and my clients were beats and like monster that, that's like how i knew him and so i was like okay i got this like sick design I got to get the illest, like, you know, sound engineer to make these things. And that was literally the original three, right? And then, like, I guess, like, for, for a while, we had to put it on the back back burner because only four started picking up. So Brian had didn't have time anymore. So we're like, okay, well, let's just halt it for a little bit. We're going to still, like, continue on with the manufacturing process, blah, blah, blah. And then eventually, we just kind of restarted the project. And we're like, okay, we need to find, like, a dope, you know, artist to do the PFPs. And I, I honestly, I'm telling you, I didn't even have a list of people. I just knew it was going to be Crow. So I hit up Crow. I showed him these designs. I'm like, can you create a PFP that that's like somehow atta like attached to these like earbuds that we're making? And Crow was like, dude, I'm in. And that's that's like literally like the foundation of like the, the artist team, you know, and our name Son actually in Chinese and Japanese means three. That's literally what it means. And it's it's actually the, the three artists. So myself, Crow Magnus, Brian, it's a three. That, that's literally what the foundation of our project like and, and the name means. So. I was going to say, the funny part is, you know, we all met on, uh, well, I met all of you, you two on Oni Force and even some other people here. And the without Oni Force kind of having its spectacular Icarus fall from getting too close to the sun, like this project m wouldn't be taking off, wouldn't be doing what it what it's done. Nor would, nor would we be mm. able to come into this project with the know-how and understanding of what we all, what, what everyone doesn't want to have happen, which is an, a failed NFT project, right? Like, I mean, the, the expectations right. were really high for Oni Force, and what it came down to, and, and when we first started doing live shows together, I remember having a conversation with Kaku about right, right after the first Oni Force party, and sort of like just getting these sort of first impressions because I hadn't met any of the team and it was just awkward. I'm like, I don't, I'm not going to dive into it because everybody <laughs> knows it, it was awkward. It, it was a bad place, but it was awkward. And early on in it, for both of us in the NFT space, we, we learned the hard way that team, the team is, is everything. And it doesn't, not everything, of course, but if you, if you're just an amazing artist like Brian, Sure, you're going to moon a project with just the quality and, and genius of your art alone. But the longevity factor is just simply isn't there because a lot of that depends on a solid team to be able to, to, to bring everything that comes after that initial pump and push. And that was, that was a lesson both Kako and I learned in a really difficult way where we put a lot of energy forward to try and f fill the gaps mm -hmm in terms of like what we felt was needed from team team members and the different facets of a business operation or an NFT project. And, and it, it just, it didn't work. And so the, the, the lessons learned are part of what we are trying to deploy on, on this, on this project. And, and I was more than happy to take another ride around the sun with I'm complex and Brian. A, just blindly, I respect his work and I would, if he asked me to do something, just like if, when he asked me to own it first, like, yeah, whatever you want me. Yeah, like, let's, let's fucking go. But also that both Brian, me, and also Kaku experience that and come into it not wanting to do that again and know to not make these mm -hmm. same mistakes. And that was part, that was a big part of creating this team. And when Kaku like sought out a lot of the, the team members, like the the team that backs the three founders, the, you know, me, the sixth beetle or whatever, after DL left was like, th this is amazing. I don't think, I don't know if there are NFT team. I mean, there's gotta be at least one or two cause you're never alone in the world, but there's gotta be at least this, this team is exquisite in terms of the, the many different components, each individual member bringing their best face forward and having past successes in terms of how to run a business, how to develop concepts from start to finish, and how to deliver, whether it's it's a product or or software, 
like in our case, we are hardware, which is super exciting. And, and we have David on board, DL, who worked on the Beats headphones and has, you know, like he, if we have any questions about the, that side of it, he has all, every answer. Just like if we have a tokenomics question, like Devin has every answer, right. runs through every permutation in his head. Like shit, Kaku and I are going to be able to do. Like you know, there's like I'm thoroughly amazed. No, definitely not. The, the 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 last space, the the last Twitter spaces we had with our team member team members in the community is was real was was really beautiful to bear witness to because it was like a good courtroom drama where you have really good debates and points from either side, but the reassurance that each side could take from just getting better and better knowledge and information about the project and our intentions and or like how the tokenomics work and how the math adds up and like what our intentions were. I think that it, it really, it really at first was like, Oh, everyone's going to run away. And then all of a sudden everybody was like, no, this is amazing. Like you guys are showing transparency. You're bringing in the community's sentiment and their opinions and taking them into like consideration on, on a timeline that's quick enough that actually is relevant. And, you know, we've turned around already on a couple of issues just based on community feedback. And I personally, I feel I would owe all of that to the interpersonal skills of, from the team members who are our outward facing public team members and the really, really good job they are capable of doing at delivering information to the public and also doing it in a, in a sensible way. Because it's all complicated. It's like 10K right. ATF. You guys feel the same way. It's it's complicated, yeah. but then it's not. Once you get it, you're like, oh, shit. Like, I was lost downtown, but downtown's only like three blocks big. Yeah. How did I get lost here? You know, you're like, you get it. And that's sort of how, how we've all been with Son on the team, where we get it. We know what we're doing. Post the hardware reveal with the headsets, I think more people are starting to understand the potential for what's possible because it's way bigger than just be like, I'm just going to listen to music on my headsets that these earbuds that look cool. Cause it's like way, it's way past right. that small amount of utility is what we're trying to do. Mm. Like we're trying to bring like an inner ear consciousness to your world. That's like identified by your wallet and stuff. And it's going to be, you know, it's, it's exciting. It brings in all the elements of the shit I care about and what Kaku cares about and what initially brought Kaku and I into like a, a common bond is just music art and the experience and now the media format is you know web three right so crow and kaku it seems like there's three main parts to what san is in the same way there's three co-founders you have the you have the hardware which is the inner earbuds you have the incredible art by crow magnus and i'm complex and i want to talk more about the concept behind that and then you have this platform play as well i want to drill deeper into that platform and how the hardware yeah. and software work together can you guys tell us a little bit more about that and what that looks like a year from now in terms of the actual experience sure well i mean because you know i didn't even answer your last question about the soul binding right and oh, i please, think I, yeah. I, i'm gonna i'm gonna yeah i think i'm gonna start with that because Look, there's there's a lot of different ways that you can do a drop, right? Like, I mean, the reason that we even went with a free mint, mm -hmm. and let, let me tell you, Crow's art should not be a free mint, okay? I'm just telling you that <laughs> right now. Definitely not. But, but, the, but, the, but, the, but the reason we did that is because we wanted to onboard more people yeah. onto the project. And I think this whole, like, you know, Vitalik talks about soul binding all the time. And I think this, like, whole soul binding is going to be the future of NFTs. Because, you know, it's, it's a lot more, like, controllable when you do it in a soul binding, because... You know, when you're a community member that's like truly believers of this project, why wouldn't you want to soul bind, right? So that you can't trade, trade, trade your assets, right? Technically. But that means that we have to provide so much utilities that it makes it worth it for you to soul bind. And so I think like when, when Devin, like, you know, he's our tokenomics master, okay? And like, he's the guy who came up with the whole like listener and concept and everything. So I can't even take credit for that. But when he was explaining what soul binding was, I was like, Man, so it's basically like, you know, a lifetime, you know, membership pass, if you want to like say like non, non Web3 like language, right? And this is how I explain to my friends that are, that are not into NFTs. So I'm like, you know, and I think like for us, it, it, it allows us to like really gauge and to see who are our like diehard fans of this project. And I think Soulbinding is like the answer to that. And that's the reason we like went with this free mint and giving the community like an option to whether you want to either trade the art, fine, like the traditional like, you know, NFT way, or you soul bind it, and then that's how you get your earbuds, that's how you get access to our events, and then that's how you gain access to our platform, 
right? So essentially the reason we did that is because I think, I personally think that as we grow as this project, you know, we build like more of a fandom, this is gonna be like more of a norm for a lot of projects because then you'll really be able to like scale and understand like, okay, like maybe we need to, you know, push a little bit more on the marketing side or blah, blah, whatever, you know? And I think like it helps us more as a, as a team to build like the project, like, you know, like I, I think like in, in a bigger way. Cause like, I think right now, like with all these like 10,000, 10 K like flip projects, like these guys, like, you know, they're talking community. I mean, some of these guys aren't even really in it for the community, right? They're just like on a quick flip and just, just dip. And, and personally, like, yeah, that's not what we're trying to do. Like we're trying to build like a real company here. I mean, we're not trying, we are a company, right? We're not like a NFT project. We are a real company. Mm -hmm. And what uh, Crow just touched up on, like every single one of our team members, we all have like, you know, you know, we all have like a background in something like whether it's web two, web three, like we've all found success in something that we've done. So I think like each one of our team members brings like a completely different element to the project. And so like, for example, for me, like I, I'm, I'm, I'm really good at marketing music, Brandy, right? So I come up with a lot, a lot of the vision, but like I can never sit here and say like I know everything about crypto or like tokenomics. But that's why we have Devin to carry that load, and we have Brian, and we have I'm com I'm sorry I'm complex, and we have Cro Magnus, who are honestly like, in my opinion, like top ten like artists like in the space, guaranteed, right? And so I just wanted to like really bring on the best of the best for this project, and I handpicked everybody pretty much, you know one by one that's why it took you know it took like a year and a half to even for us to like fully launch because i didn't want to rush out like i'm sorry part of my language but like a shit project i wanted to like really like come off the gate be fully docs like if, if you like go on our web website like you can literally see every single one of our team members like linkedin social media everything because we're proud of our our team members we want people to understand that hey we built this like spectacular team to bring you a spectacular product you know and Kaku, as you say all that, I yeah. hear so much yes. deep conviction in your voice. And when you say Crow Magnus and I'm Complex mm -hmm. are top 10 artists, I, I, I wholeheartedly agree. And I want to really jump into the art aspect of it. So can you talk us through the concept? Because this art is some of the most, it's such an interesting, intricate, detailed, but like very artistic. It's hard for me even yeah. to put words on it, but I'd love for you to talk more about where that came from. I'm, I'm going to definitely pass the mic over to Crow, but I'll just tell you the initial concept behind like the art. So when Crow and I first started talking about this PFP project, I was like, Crow, for the love of God, let's not do another animal picture, okay? Like for, for please, I cannot, I cannot handle another like, you know, like a picture of an animal or whatever, you know? So I was like, let's do something different. Let's do like, like a mecha meets art blocks type shit. So it's like things that people can like literally like mint and like, when they get it, it's like an art piece that they can like, you know, proudly print out and like hang it in their house. And then let's build a story around it. So like the whole like concept of San is, you know, in, in our lore, Suncor is this like, you know, this uh, technology company that creates like droids, robots, whatever. And so I, I was like, Crow, let's, let's do it backwards. Let's not do a character PFP. Let's create the environment of, of San. Let's create like the lore, but in picture form. So like what is Suncor, like this company, like making to make like our life easier? And that, that was the concept behind it. Yeah, I, I think I, I think when we when like really early on, when it was still like just an idea of forming that we were going to do something totally abstract. And it was like, if you guys are familiar with like, say like Fidenza or like art blocks where it's like, it looks like a, like a Jackson Pollock or something. And the first couple concept passes on the PFP, everybody liked, but I was like, I was not, I wasn't as bored on board as everyone else was with the abstract start. I don't do abstract very much, but I, I do a lot of, I do a lot, a lot of graphic design. So like, mm. I feel like good abstract is sort of like graphic design. So after the first couple passes at it, I sort of said, Hey, in the process of like identifying the base as like this, like, or just working through the artwork, I guess, because it was all compositional problems and challenges. It was like, how can I fit in this square canvas? Right. Cause the PFPs are always in the square and it's a, it's different than cinema because you have widescreen. So compositionally, I just, basically I just kept getting diagonals and triangles that were like making things work abstractly. And I, and, and so I've just pushed that a little bit farther, just put the gas on that and said, you know what, 
just kind of like fuck the idea of like a, a human base or like a a character, you know, like just one base. Like let's have this sort of like abstract geometric. It's not even abstract. It's a geometric form. It's like one of our base you know, geometric forms. It's, it's super easy to, for the eye to digest and it lends itself to cool compositions that aren't dependent on symmetry. So I took, I really wanted to avoid the symmetry and iconography thing because a lot of the PFPs, if they're like straightforward, you end up getting this sort of like iconographical look and it's, it feels somewhat limiting, but I had done I had worked on some three and three quarter style PFP project character projects where I also found a lot of difficulties and, and problems with that. So part of what en ended up driving Son into what it was, was just like a real base level, like art, like s solution essentially. And just saying to get really interesting compositions, I'm depending on triangle shapes within this square. And if and it, in order for it to, to make it to like a 10,000 point interesting volume, I have to push these shapes out of the crop of the square, right? And that was where we start. That's that's where the deeper themes started to come in terms of scale because I was really interested in micro macro. I wanted the world to be giant mechs, which we're not there yet. And I want the world to be these drones, which are based off, you know, animal forms and, and like biomimicry so that... If it, like in the way that a lot of drones and a lot of drone technology these days is using ways to cover terrain that mimic natural forms, anim, animal propulsion methods. And that was sort of, that's the principle, right? That was the principle behind it. There's Suncor, there's the company that manufactures everything. There's an idea of like a micro macrocosm so that we can scale down to like into a microscope. It, like inside our headset, working on our soldering wires all the way back out to being like, no, this is the team work who has to work on the leg joint on this giant mech. And that was the macro scale. So there's the triangle, the, the micro macro, the technology of like drones and, and robots and such and Suncor. And that was sort of like from there, it just it just sort of blew up. I really, I was so bored with PF, the PFP, sort of like the tr what was going on, the saturation of like, there's a fucking penguin, there's a fucking llama, there's a fucking dodo bird, there's this. It's like just a dodo bird with sunglasses. It's a llama with sunglasses. It's, it's, and it was like, it was just redundant, right? And it there, and I knew if I just put something out looking like that, because there's ton, tons of artists way more talented than me who can put out way cooler character art. Like, for example, I was working on a PFP project that basically got canned when Nanoverse came out, the PXN project, because the artwork we were looking that we had made almost looked exactly, it was like the same viewpoint in the same sort of size in the canvas. And when it, they showed like their first, you know, drop teaser and I looked at it, I was like, no, no, it like looked exactly like what was on my tablet in front of me. And I was like, we're done. We're done. Since be entering the NFT space and working on a couple different PFPs, I've definitely been like, I know what I don't want to do. I know it's been done way too much. And I know if I just try to innovate and do something different in, in the solution process, as long as I have Kaku and Brian as my peers to throw, throw, throw stuff against, then I'll be fine. They'll tell me when I'm in the wrong place. So the PFP as it stands and the project definitely turned the artwork directed the, 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 the world, the IP building and the world building was filled out by initially by me and then by the rest of the team. Yeah, that's amazing. Crow, hearing your like perspective on building the art and moving away from the traditional flow, right? For me, I see so much mimicry in what we're doing in NFTs right now. And so it's so refreshing to see a project like Kaku was saying earlier, whether it's web two based, web three based, wherever you come from, having this established professional background, right? Even in web three, the way you both have immersed yourself. I am Simplex with what he's doing with the Chicago Bulls. Like just the, the level of talent that is working on your guys's end, to me, it really harkens back to when I first found 10KTS project, if I was being honest. 
Like I loved hearing that Kaku said y'all got the LinkedIn profiles. Like y'all could look at who the real professionals are behind the PFP side of things, right? Because I think we get caught up in this whole hype cycle and we, we follow the PFPs, the hot moment, right? But like who's really building in the space right now? Who's not just mimicking something that someone else has done before and recreating the same old jargon or the same old art, right? And so hearing this step process of Kaku saying, you know, this started a year and a half ago and it's about patience in the rollout, right? That's one thing I just, I have the world of, of appreciation for, for projects that are really taking the time to discover who their true fans are, right? How the, the free man, Crow's art should not ever be free. Let's be clear about that, right? No way. That being said, no to get that, <laughs> even if like an, an initial little, like a mind blown by the, by the renders that I've seen even on the initial drop and like I, someone in, in 10 KTS community lay like the yeah. multiple sets down over each other and just the layers that are building there. It's freaking incredible, right? And that's, that's trading at like point, point oh five right now just off top, right? And that was free, just something y'all gave out to the community, mm -hmm. right? And it's, it's about interest and what a true fan is. And are you paying attention? Do you know what's going on? You know, turn, tuning into y'all's streams and what you're doing on, on Twitch. Y'all are creating a wheel in a much different way than the historical precedents for what the NFT uh, community and culture is being established as, right? And I think that's a really beautiful thing. We need to try to look, continue to build outwards from NFTs instead of trying to find more people to bring in from other NFT projects to our brand new NFT projects, right? And so with the, with the complete Web 2, you know, Kaku's back on the road traveling. I am Simplex with, with, with Chicago Bulls, what you said about EL and with Beats and Monster, right? You can clearly hear the quality of the team going on in the project. This isn't just t a, a, an artist and two devs that decided, well, let's roll out something and go find a bag in Web3, y'all. Oh, you totally. know, and, and that's refreshing. So I just want to say thank y'all so much and, and, and taking the time to, like you say, with the soul binding, the multiple options y'all are giving for people to decide the level of commitment that they want to put in, it gives you guys an insight to, to how deep fans are truly buying in as well and allows you to make moves on on your project and marketing and that align to what you're seeing with the value input of your community. And so that symbiotic relationship that can be created is something that, that I think is, it's anomaly in the space right now, but I really look forward to the day where it becomes the standard. We're, we are awesome. all about trying to build trust yeah. with our community. And one of the dynamics that we were, that we thought about with a free mint was that, you know, we basically gave you some, like you got it for free, so it's not like I super feel obligated to be like, I don't know, you didn't pay anything for it. You got a piece of art. You got like a placeholder. Like, you know, I could, that's like the lowest, lowest rung I could possibly, like possibly care is like, we're done. But the truth of it is we set ourselves up with the opportunity to say, you know what? You all, everyone's familiar with the names and faces on this team because we've already worked on other projects. So you know that we have capabilities here whether or not we hit the mark on those projects you know there that's a complicated ar argument to have but the truth of the matter is that the one big takeaway we have and a lot of this is also driven home by what 10 ktf does is that the community is is everything to the to this project it's everything to the what we would talk about on clubhouse we all sort of like tried to to, to walk the walk and talk the talk as far as like what you were saying diamond hands about like a rising tide lifts all ships like there was an infamous i'm complex post where he had the ring on and it was like we were all going to wag me at the height of oni force and people were feeling that and there's a reason for that yeah so right now we're in mm -hmm. the process of a what building essentially what i would consider brand loyalty is that if you take the time with our project to really dig into the details and what we're trying to do then i guarantee you you will be interested by one of its many facets whether it's the music end of things, the hardware end of things, which is is hardware, that's a broad category. It's not just limited to headpiece, to earbuds. There's, a, there's the tokenomics, and then there's also a whole music platform that if you had nothing, if you had absolutely no care in the world about the my mind puddles on a, on a paper, that you could come into Son and strictly just start dumping your own music into our platform and be able to start earning like right out the gate. So all of that is just like, 
if my RoboCop Prime directives are are straight, then it's artist first. Prime directive number one is artist first. We we like I felt that with Oni first Oni Force, excuse me. Brian felt that with Oni Force. Like Kaku learns that every time he gets near a stage or gets near a booking agent, like we know that that is a problem, and we are constantly trying to address that. So part of the Son mission is that we want the artists first. We want musicians, uh, up and coming musicians, musicians that haven't already been like signed and delivered and have already are on their trajectory up to the top. We wanna help bring those people into the fold in the same way that Clubhouse and our Web3 community and the 10KTF community bring newbies and noobs and amateurs into the fold. We break it down for them, we, we give them itemized information in, in a timely format, in a, in, in a palatable way, and they take it in. And if they're, if they're half the people we think they are, they will immediately just get it. And they will just be like, this is so fucking cool. If you're a creative type or you engage in any kind of like creative, like something, nothing from something from nothing type process, you're going to love this space. You're going to love 10 KTF. It's like nothing but creative surprises. You're going to love song too, because like, uh, you know, I didn't even know Brian was going to put out that Bulls piece. And I was like, Brian has got, who knows what Brian, you know, Brian has like other toy lines that he's he's got. He's got God, God Complex, which if you haven't seen God Complex, I mean, he's been making action figures, 12 inch action figures for over a decade now. There's like 30 some odd characters. You know, it's a whole other universe that, you know, if you really started to dig into Son, or again, if you were into the, the, the technical aspect of it, our developer coffee converter one of all of the, the the developers on our team are really into puzzles they all were playing magic and pokemon cards they all gamify everything they'd probably be banned from every conceit casino for counting cards i guarantee it and they yeah. they hid they yep. hid 1.3 eth in our contract <clears throat> and we were trying to like drop hints over the past two and a half weeks, like after we minted, we're like, there's money, there's stuff to be found, you know, but like, we didn't really want to say it till we finally came out. We're like, here, you guys, there's something hidden, go for it. But those are like, that's, those are just small little things, but it means the world to have them run through the permutation, be successful, get great feedback. The person, the Maximoni who figured out the, the, the puzzle works for Artifact. He loved it. He wrote a write up a thread on it. That's that's me. That's Twitter posts for us. That's our getting tagged. And then he went and swept our floor with it with the with the one point three. Like how could you not? I mean that's like a little Web three success story. Like inside of a nesting doll inside of another nesting doll. It was like oh that fucking worked great. Like we know there's those same people aren't the same people are going to be like I loved Brian's I'm complex piece or his Chicago Bulls piece. Those aren't the same. It's a different demographic. But now we're we've got both of those, and that's that's like how we are. Like that's where again where it goes back to this team being like very fleshed out. They all are very good at their the different reasons why they're they've been brought onto the team. And when we combine like Voltron or Combatler or Voltus Five or any giant Gestalt combiner robot, we just kick ass. And I and I'm confident in that. And I and I've. I like rarely can say that. I've said that when I've been on a couple of B Boy crews, but for this for this Son team, I'm like this team is just we're gonna fucking win. It's just because I like, I think our project has so many elements, and you know our project has you know like we have music, we have puzzles, we have a you know a really really cool lore that's even being built right now, you know, and and our team is really good at like kind of hiding Easter eggs, whether it's in like our white paper, whether it's in some of our tweets that we do kind of like 10 ktf really you know so people are just really having fun and we have like dude honestly we have like these conspiracy like theorists like that's in our community that's like digging like from posts from back in may you know like and like trying to figure out like hey oh shit i think i found some alpha in here you know what i'm saying so like it's it's been really fun just seeing like what the community has been coming up with like like if anything yeah. like I, you know obviously we talk we talk on a back channel like uh, with the team all the time i'm like whoa shit like was that was that in our project like i, I don't remember this but like you know it's, it's been really fun like kind of like writing and building with the community really you know and uh, a lot of our moderators some of the people that are helping us write the lore um 
you know, they, they've been very proactive about wanting to help us out. So, you know, if, if we feel like, you know, they're qualified enough, like, we're just like, yo, let's just work, you know? Like, it's not really like, I think our vibe is just very, very like laid back, but we get shit done. You know, we, we all execute. And yeah, I think, I think that's why like, you know, we're finding success. And I think like the community is really starting to resonate with us, you know, cause I'm gonna tell you right now, like we, we started this project, like Discord and Twitter, like launch in like May. And I'm telling you, when we first started, like Crow, Crow definitely like agreed with me. On, like, like we definitely were not ready. We definitely launched a little too early, and mm-hmm. we were kind of like, okay, like how do we kind of, uh, you know, obviously like at the beginning they were like, oh, Crow, Kaku, you know, I'm complex. They're on a project together. We we got the initial hype, people hopping in, but we were definitely not ready. You know, like we didn't even like have like a formulation of like what we wanted to do then. So we were like, okay, let's slow it down a little bit. Let's 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 organize and let's figure out how to like you know take it up a notch and, and, and get it, get it to that level. So it took us like kind of like four months to like even get to this level where really, we're really like starting to see some hype and people like really resonating with the project, you know? And I think for the last like four months, we've been trying to like figure out like, okay, how do we take that initial concept of the lore and, and like build it into something like unique? Like we didn't even have like this music platform stuff figured out till maybe like three months ago, you know, and this is like a new concept. We found, you know, by like talking to a lot of like, you know, our VC friends or whatever. And, and by the way, we're not, we're not VC funded. Everything is self-funded, right? Like our project is all self-funded by our team members. Mm-hmm. We didn't want to take any VC funds because we truly believe in our own project. And so we put our own money into this shit, right? Because I, we felt like, you know, we want to, we want to like create like a strong brand so that VCs in the future can approach us and, you know, we're, we're, we're going to be even a bigger value than what, it, you know, what it is and maybe what it was, maybe like if, if we take, you know, VC funds from day one, you know what I'm saying? Cause that's, that's the kind of conviction we have like on our, on our project. And I, and I can attest like every single team member feels the same way. We're like, we don't need anybody else's money. We'll just put it in our own shit, you know? But anyway, going back to what I was saying, I think like, yeah, it's just, I think, I think like it's been a really good growing experience for us. Like we're, you know, we're obviously like molding it as we go. But uh, it's, it's been great, man. Like every single team member that's joined on has brought in something new. And it's just been like just a, it's such a great journey. And to just, just, to just to think that like we only minted a week ago. You know what I'm saying? And like this one week, you know, like one day in Web3 is a, you know, it, it seems like a year, right? Dude, this week yeah. has been crazy. Like, I mean, we built like a fandom like we, we didn't even expect in, in this like one week window. So, I mean, we're just like thinking now there's so many things that we want to do. It's all possible now because like the, you know, the community is really riding with us. And, and to be honest with you, thank, thanks to the 10 KTF community too. Like a lot of the grail people are like in our community now. You know what I'm saying? Like last, I don't know if you guys were on our server last week, but during our mint, like, dude, it was like the copy pasta gang was like there all day going nuts. Like I almost, like, dude, I, I, I almost like my eyes were go bugging out like during like the mint. You know what I'm saying? I was like. This is, ins- this is insane. Like, you know, so, yeah. So, so big shout out to you guys, man. Like you guys, you guys are really like helping us like kind of build like that initial community. And it's, it's been really fun. Like there's a lot of crossovers between like 10 KTF already. And like a crow and I hopped into the grail server like last week. And we're just chatting with the community, trying to answer questions. And let me tell you, man, 10 KTF, 10 KTF community asks us the hard questions, you know? And I think that's also why we're confident because we're able to answer these questions because we know what the fuck we're talking about. You know what I mean? And I think yeah, that's yeah, also like, yeah. like has, has yeah. drawn a lot of the fandom as well. Cause they're like, Oh, these guys are for real. These guys are really trying to build something. And like, you know, they are also kind of like building a cool lore, but they're also doing this hardware thing. They're also doing like, mm-hmm. you know, there's just so many elements to this project. So I, I feel like, you know, if there, if there's anybody that can do it, it's us because we're not really like fully web three, like we're like web 2.5, I guess if you want to call it. So like, there's a lot of my friends that's never been interested in crypto, never been interested in NFTs that are like hopping in right now because they're like, I can understand this vision. You know, it's not just like a crypto project. You know what I'm saying? Like, right. so that it's been really fun, man. Like, cause I can tell you, man, like I'm not, I'm not like, I'm still learning crypto right now, you know, but I know how to build brands. I know how to like market. I like, so, so I think like, it's just a really nice marriage of like, you know, someone like me, who's like a, you know, like a straight up a musician and being able to work with like, you know, brilliant minds like Garrick, like Will, like, you know, these guys, Devin, these guys are, are used to all work in layer one, you know, they know, they know what to do. Right. And you're also, I'm also working with Crow, Brian, like, honestly, like artistic geniuses. So it's just been really fun, man. Kaku and I went to the first RL 10 KTF event together and we met, we met a lot of great people and, and I was sort of like, I had so much, 
I had so much excitement about that event of just being like, 10K TF attracted a certain type of pers person to the project. Again, and, and I can't, I couldn't pin it down exactly what it was, but mm. it, it did. You, like I minted when it first came out, when they, when they first launched and I was like, I started seeing some day packs of like some shoes around. And I was like, oh shit, I'm like, this looks really cool. And we were still, it was still like, we were, we were raging. So people were excited about interesting new projects and it literally looked like nothing else out there. It might as well have been a rug. I mean, at first I was like, this is like those, yeah. those pixel overlord guys who have like 600 pixel <laughs> PFP projects and they just shit this out, shit this out. And we're all getting like yoinked for, for ETH. And, but the, the, the high, the product looks so cool. Right. And it, and it really just, it solved all the problems with the web three issues of like, how do we all, how do these communities interweave in a way that really covers all the bases, like from the the narrative end all the way to the, the technical aspect to literally being like you're wearing you know call of duty shoes in sonic the hedgehog sort of scenario and they did it and i and i've always that like that just creative solutioning bearing witness to that it has always been at my greatest love for 10k tf and everything they do sort of stems from that and so it set the bar really high and both kaku and i have bared witness to their evolution. And I, and I bring that up as a project all the time because not only because now we have such a big chunk of their community in our project, but also because they really do serve as sort of like a, a lighthouse for the NFTs for Web3. And that if you are into Web2 and you don't understand Web3, it's a great entry point. And the best part is that 10KTF fostered and built a community that is willing to do the legwork and extra work to help engage those people coming into Web3 who don't know anything. And we've, and there's, you know, you guys, Crypto Dilly, Sask, I mean, the damn show, like when you all started just putting out YouTube channels and content based on the 10KTF project, obviously 10KTF was like, all right, well, if you're going to do that, we're going to put you as captains of the team then. And they did. And it was like, yes, this is how, this is, this is, it was like, you know, it's just like going into battle town. You equipped, you got your rewards. Here's your rewards, you know? And it, and it was like, it makes perfect sense. Like I didn't, you know, like I, you, everybody wants to be part of that, of this world. And they, they're figuring out cool ways, innovative ways to write their community into the world. And I, and that is, that's, I came right before I got into NFTs, before COVID started, I ran a, a photo experiential photo business and we worked for Lexus was one of our team. One marketing was our biggest client in the Southeast. And we would build experiential environments to come inside of and take, take really high, nice photos with, you know, 21 megapixels, 5d mark three, like the whole thing. And it's all self-service. And that's all I did for like three years was I did build outs for Lexus for weddings. You want custom props. You want themed props for your events. I do like laser cutter. I do all sorts of stuff. I build the scale. We did Charleston fashion week. I did like, so when we talked, when we talk about like, uh, when you pull out again, full, like micro macro and you pull all the way out, you're like, this is all experiential art. It, you know, it, and when I was in school in the nineties, it was like performance art was a thing, but this is like an experiential art where the, 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 the audience is actually part of a part of this and in a way that's never been done before. And it's all being, you know, compiled online forever for eternity. And so that's where I like, that's why I under, that's why I get 10 TTF because I can see like, okay, once we get into the world of IRL experiential 10 KTF events, like we all got to dabble in at the event where we finally got to meet each other and say hello to the beautiful souls in front of me, like that, is where it really starts to shift and change our our our, our lives in in a really really profound way, yeah. and that's what I'm that's what I'm that's like what I'm most excited about. Like you said, Atari. We just had an event like yesterday. Yeah, when when Beeple builds builds Midori Land in Charleston, Ooh, right? Yeah. It's a fifty thousand so square yeah. foot facility. He said fifty thousand square feet. He said there's more projectors in there than he's ever seen anywhere. 
right? So like they are basically like, hey, we're building this fun house. Come on, guys, build the the everyone who's anybody knows like it's like it's a builder phase right now like if you're a builder build if you're doing <clears throat> you know content based on projects and you're doing this as a weekly review just keep going like the damn show is gonna is already beca has become synonymous with 10ktf like it's this is a good environment to build in and we're not to the like full-on payoff obviously because we're in a, a you know a, a, the market was just like you know but we everyone who really fucking gives a shit is still here building and every and it weeded out all the people who didn't who didn't have the patience or are here in it for the wrong reasons personally i'm glad that we're building during a bear because it just shows like more conviction on our, on our end right like honestly like if you're trying to build a brand it shouldn't matter if you're building in a bear or a, a bull market anyway like if you have a great concept great community it, it you know it should like transcend time right that's just how, what i believe Right. So, so for me, like, like, you know, obviously like, you know, behind, behind the scenes, we were talking about, Hey man, do you, do you think we should launch? Like, you know, you know, obviously like the market is shit right now. And we decided like ultimately to do it because we're like, dude, we, we have such a strong brand, such a strong team. Our concept is so different. Like, let's just run with it, you know? And I'm glad that we did because, you know, obviously like it, it's been, it's been a challenge in some ways, but it, it made our team stronger because it, it made us like really like start thinking about a lot of different like different kinds of techniques different kind of like marketing approaches to like build like you know like a brand you know and i think like you know like i never want to talk about you know like floor or anything like that but for free mint it's been incredible just seeing like our floor like sustain and and to be honest with you, you were saying like 0 0.05 actually we're almost at 0 0.09 now overnight so it's been kind of crazy and we've been having crazy whales just like sweep and like it's it's been kind of like crazy to see on our end you know just seeing how many people and honestly th that this i have to give credit to crow like Cr crow's art i'm telling you is going to go his is going to be like it's going to go down in history as the the best free mint to ever come okay in the web3 space in the nft space for <laughs> sure hands down there's nothing like like it and there's not no one no one's gonna be able to copy shit that's the thing i think it's gonna break twitter i'm so excited for it to drop <laughs> when reveal dude i'm telling you when i know this it's super polarizing. I knew it. I knew it from the get-go. I was like, I'm taking this massive risk with this idea of like a triangle as a base and not some fucking cool characters with like samurai swords and stuff. Like, you know, like I really did. I, I, I cried myself to sleep some nights. I was like, what am I doing? What am I doing? I'm going to be the reason to tank this whole thing. And it was funny. The other day I was in the Discord, in Son Discord or something, and somebody came in and he was like, he was like, Crow, what's up, man? The, uh, nice project or something like that. And I was like, thanks. And he's like, he's like I just, uh, no, I really don't like that zebra, though. And I was like, oh, oh, damn, coming out the gate strong. That's cool. I mean, you know, it's not for everybody or whatever. And he's like, he kind of like dug his heels in and was like, yeah, no, my luck. I'm going to end up with that zebra. And I was like, man, God. like I could just see like my heart, my whole, like, I was like, I'm not going to get any drawing done the rest of the day. Like this guy just crushed my, like my, he, <laughs> I don't even know who he is. <laughs> and he hadn't even, yeah, I don't even don't think he'd even bought stuff. into the project. So he was just like speculating on stuff. But you know, the truth is, is you gotta like, you gotta take risks here. This is like web three. Like we're all, no one's. Yeah. I mean, Crow, I've yeah. seen this so much yeah, that no. in the NFT space where somebody doesn't like the art and then as the project picks up steam and as you know you guys execute on what you guys said in the community reality behind you people are like you know what the art's not so bad and then they're like and then two months later they're like i love the art and so it's i think a lot of people are fickle in that way <laughs> so I, I never take any of that too seriously it's just funny because they're so like the range of art is so you know like some art like cool cats is like six lines of character maybe like composed of six strokes like one two three four like you know you look at like a john mctavish or like someone or like brian and you count strokes in the piece and you're like okay that's that's like a very significant difference in like the amount of time spent in the artwork and some people are really good at stylistically doing simple things and that's not me and obviously that's why he's called i'm complex right he's like <laughs> doesn't do simple shit at all ever so like we're trying to do we're not trying to do like an, an easy pass on things like we will there will be cutesy versions of shin that come out and the hello kitty version of shin and shit but but 
to be honest, where all of our passions lie are like we we want to be like technically a little bit more complex. Like we want a layer of obfuscation, and we want people to have to intellectually and be engage a little bit to be part of to be part of the project. And once you're in the community, you just it's just going to be rewards left and right because it's just it's awesome people, and we have awesome stuff coming in the Sorry. pipeline. I just want to let you know, like someone mentioned conspiracy theory earlier that y'all are getting some conspiracy theories and so on now, and like. Hey, y'all, like if th that's like the basis point. So that's part of the beautiful thing of what's originated from 10 KTF, right? Is like we all speculate, but like maybe they had this whole thing mapped out from the jump, right? Or maybe we were all in there tinfoil in so hard that we actually chipped in some good ideas that the team could work with, right? And build into what they may not have had planned, right? Even some things there where, I mean, that's symbiosis in itself. We, we've been seeing ourselves come up in their art lately. And like, you know, it's, it, it means the world to see yourself in your project. You know, the, 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 the trust that it takes from the, from the team to be able to do that, that's not anything small, you know? And they let us run around and, and spill out all these wild ass theories all over Twitter, all over YouTube, you know? And, and credit to them and, and credit to y'all, right? Because if you're gonna start a project that you're gonna open up little Easter eggs in, right? You've gotta be willing to accept all the, all the wildness that might come with that. Like the, the pieces of speculation. I, didn't, I wasn't thinking that the other week when we wrote this out, but damn, that, that actually kind of makes sense, right? So these little pieces where community can, can kind of grow from what we're seeing. And what I loved hearing was that y'all have so many tiers to what you're doing, right? So the music, the, the art, the, the, the mystery pieces, right? The discord, the community that's building, the physical goods that are coming, and the streaming platform. One thing that I've been seeing recently is I've had a lot of undiscovered artists. Even I was at, out at my dinner, my birthday dinner last night, and like someone heard me mention, like I hosted a podcast week called Bake and Bake with Diamond Hands, right? And so like my waiter heard like that I was hosting a podcast called Wake and Bake with Diamond Hands, and he's like, you host a podcast? Like, what, what are you doing, if you don't mind me asking? And then he starts telling me about how he's an artist himself. And, you know, he hasn't been discovered and he's, he's making music with a group of his homies in their basement, you know. And, and I think about all the people out there that have been putting in their grind as creators, right, waiting for an opportunity, waiting for a larger bridge, right. Because at the end of the day, the one thing I've learned from 10KTF is like without the community, without the amazing team behind this, like I could be out doing the same speculative work or the same research work for 9511 other projects, right. But with the team at 10KTF and, and what they have going, the plan with the community that I have backing me, right? It's a bunch of good people at the end of the day that all met up over an ethos of honor, right? Like Wag Me Son is an honorable man and we just try to hold up to that, right? And, and I just wanna say this real quick, Crow, I have had the world of respect for you in the way that you have walked through the fires of NFTs, right? and come out on the other end like i remember six months ago you put out a, a tweet like i i'll never forget it man like i, I all your notifications are on my well, tweets by the way my guy and like you put out a tweet that says at this year this time next year i'm gonna be working on my own project not someone else's and like i don't know if you remember sending that tweet or not but like that was so freaking inspiring to me even to like start thinking like you know what i'm building deeply into 10 ktf with the homies right now right but, but what comes next, right? What's around the corner, whatever that is, no one really knows in all this Web3 stuff. So just the piece about like the opportunity to onboard the artists that are out there working hard, whether it's art, whether it's, uh, you know, whether it's music, right? These, these multiple creative level opportunities that y'all are gonna be able to present for your community. I think there's a lot of power in that, that really, I, I just wanna put a focal point and a kudos to y'all because at the end of the day, like you could give someone a fish and, and they'll eat for the night, right? Or you could teach them how to fish and they'll eat for a lifetime. And, and it's up, up to us how far we wanna go with the fishing gear, right? That, that y'all give or whatever it is. But, but when, we can, when we can build a meal together and eat together, like that's, there's no one else I wanna sit down at the table with, you know, than, than my folks, my community. And then what we're doing on our end right now is finding people within our community, our creators like Re with what she did for Netta and her captain. She did this bad, like 3D. Netta's out there doing judo ninja moves. 
And then we also look at other aspects of our community. We got a few people that glow, blow glass, right? And like, that's not a traditional set in what we do in 10 KTF right now, right? But we know as a community, if we're not lifting all boats, what, what are we good for, right? And so we're working right now talking to our glass artists about how we can bridge them into the future of what we're going to end up doing as a community in 10 KTF because the project has what they do, right? But I think when we're really going to be successful in NFTs is when the community members can start seeing what they can do in the future too. And that's not meaning to go start some rug project, right? But, but to be supported within a project that shows you the symbiotic support just as you put in, right? Like that synergy that can be created from it, the reciprocity. Those are the lasting pieces for me. Those are the communities that I just want to dive into and learn more about. So uh, I don't know, Kaku, if you could add a little bit about like, what are you seeing on the low levels of music right now as far as creators? I mean, are you looking forward to having that bridge? W what does that yeah. look like for you on your end? Yeah, for sure. So, I mean, I, on, on the music side, oh, so before, before I dive into this, I was going to give Crow props because the whole, like, again, on the art side, the whole concept came because we had the hardware, right? That was like kind of like triangular shaped. So he basically took like a triangle and built mm. like an entire series, like a collection based wow. on like a triangle. So if you guys go look at any of these like sneak peeks, it's literally the same triangle, but he like built like animals, droids, like 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 hands, like whatever, like out of it. It's, it's like it blew my mind. Like whenever he was like showing me sneak peeks, I was like, dude, this is insane that you were like able to create this. So just wanted to give him props on that because. The, these PFEs came out like better than I think any of us could have imagined, you know, and this is just the beginning. This is just our genesis. Kaku, before you answer the next question, when reveal, when reveal, we got to know. <laughs> you got to, you got to ask the guy to, you know, to my, to my right. I have no idea. You know, you got to, when, when crow, when crow is what, what they're saying. <laughs> you know, this is my first PF, this is like a, my first PFP project. So we're, j I'm just making sure that I am dotting all the I's and crossing all the T's. Like right now, just like I want to make sh like if we had minted out a non free mint, I think we probably would have already revealed. But as a as as we've sort of come to understand our brand better and the potential with the dy dynamic end of NFTs, like which, again, my people peer human one, like those are themes that is that are also a big part of song is that we don't have to this doesn't have to stay the way it is forever that. The, the work that comes out and the NFTs and the things that get we put in owners' hands yeah. have the ability to change. Just like the only constant in the world is change. So we're going to try and like embrace the technology and really like put it to the forefront of the project. Kaku, let's go back to you with Diamond's question. Yeah, yeah. The, the opportunity to, to onboard underground creators to the music platform in the future. So if people that might be interested in music haven't quite tapped into NFTs, kind of having a bridge to to build opportunity on a platform that may, they may not have ever known about otherwise, you know? I think that's a really cool aspect of, of, of the, the music piece of what's going on here for sure. So, you know, when Devin initially pitched me on the, the platform side, right? Because we, we kind of like kind of hit like a roadblock at, at one point because we were a hardware-based project at the beginning, right? But as we started kind of like talking to more and more kind of, uh, you know, just, just kind of like advisors, I guess, of a project, like some, you know, you know, big time VC, some angels, they were just saying like, hey, you know what, to carry a project just solely based on hardware, it's one, very, very hard because, you know, you're going to have to have like a big supply to, to do a real hardware project, right? Like, so if you're talking like Beats or Monster, like, you know, these guys are ordering like, you know, an MOQ of like a million, two million like per, per piece and they got to sell that shit out to make any sort of profit. So, so honestly, the traditional hardware, like a company, a project, it, it's very hard, right? So we were like, okay, we only have a 10K supply. What else, what else can we add to this, to, to make this like a full project? Obviously it was a software solution. And, and I think like, you know, me, and I don't know if you guys know my music, but I am not like, you know, like, you know, out there making like, you know, like radio music per se, right? Like, I mean, people that ride with my music, they ride with my music, they, they, you know, they, they like that I'm like an open format, like DJ, I play everything during my sets, right? I make all my edits, all my remixes, whatever. I, you know, I, I came from the underground too, dude. Like, you know, I play all these big festivals or whatever, but I've never s sold out, you know, and I've, I'm still very true to my sound. And honestly, if I did sell out, I probably would be a bigger artist, but I just, I just don't, I just can't see myself doing that. 
right? And so like that's when like you know Devin was like, why don't we just like create you know a, a platform based on that that you know what you just told me, you know? And because there are you know as like an underground artist myself, you know I've I've kind of made it to a certain I guess like level, but I know a lot of talented producers and you know musicians that just haven't had like the opportunity to like make it. And and honestly speaking, like the traditional DSPs right now, like Spotify, even SoundCloud, it's just, it's just like you can't really discover new artists, right? Because they don't have like the backing, they don't have the push, they don't even know how to market themselves. So we're like, yo, Web3 probably is a solution for that. So let's make a platform that's different from like an audience, that's different from Royal, right? Royal is like, you know, you know, not to knock on Blau, I think the idea is great, but they're, they're still focusing on big artists, right? So there's, there's still like, you know, a market there. And so we're like, fuck, let's make a platform that's solely based on, you know, giving a lot of you know, new artists like a, a platform and building like a top 40 type billboard, like, you know, I guess like that deal, right? So essentially, I'm not going too deep into it, the whole like listen to earn model is based on, let's say you're a new artist, Diamond, okay? And you go on our platform, okay? And, and you release your music there, right? Essentially, the whole idea is you want like, you know, your friends and, and your fans to support your music. Right. But your fans is, you know, is incentivized because they're earning while supporting you. So so the creator, meaning you, Diamond, makes 50 percent. The other 50 percent goes to your supporter. Right. And essentially, as the music like starts to blow up, the artist starts to blow up. You you make more money and you want to continue to support that artist. And that's literally like what, what we're trying to do. You know what I'm saying? And like I, I explain things in a very simple way. David can go and like explain this and like you know, make it sound like super beautiful. I'm just telling you as like a musician, like, like how excited I am about this because it's like, you know, there's a, there's a lot of people that I've already been talking to that I know would crush it like in, on this platform. And I, I, I think it's going to be a, you know, it's, it's going to you know, revolutionize the music industry a little bit. You know, we're trying to disrupt the music industry, you know, and that's like, that's essentially what we're trying to do, man. Like, I think, you know, think about it this way. Okay. So let's say you were the first person to discover Post Malone, right? But if Post Malone was on our platform, wouldn't you remember like your first like top 10 supporters that were like, writing with the music from day one on a platform like ours? And that's ex that's exactly what we're trying to do. Right. It's because like for for us, it's like, man, these guys have been like, you know, charting me on this top 40 like song, like, you know, billboard, like I'm going to reward them. Right. And on our platform, you're going to be able to do that. We're going to help like these artists with merch like we have earbuds. We're going to make like custom earbuds for your fan base like it's endless of like what we can do you know what i'm saying so like we're not just a platform but we're also going to like help like artists market help them like make merch and it's just all like under this sun like I, I guess like umbrella that's fucking forgive me real quick while i let's fuck <laughs> <laughs> I bang that headphone i had to bang one time like that is that's what the future of web 3 should be what you just said kaku i cannot wait let's that's amazing. Uplifting artists, giving them an opportunity, helping them market and build in a way that they couldn't build themselves, right? That's what 10KTF has done for me to see y'all pushing in that same venue in that same form. Mm -hmm. That's making it out here because we've talked about it ourselves in our 10KTF group. We're all just a bunch of people who haven't discovered mm -hmm. ourselves in Web3 that are out here that trying to make it ourselves. So we're out here pumping out content and, and blessed to have the opportunity to do so. So... I mean, with the backing of 10 KTF, they put us up as captains. But what y'all are trying to do, I really think what you're saying, um, you know, with the traditional platforms, that's next level. And there's no greater, like, true fans. What's a true fan? Someone that started at the day one, right? That's what we're trying to change is, like, I think the first response we've got from most people after the initial pitch is that, how are you going to compete with Spotify? how are you going to compete like with a, with a music service provider? And we're like, we are not trying to bring Justin Bieber onto the platform. This platform is not for Justin. Justin Bieber has already made it. He already has his audience. It's like, we are trying to start and find people who have not been found, but also recognize that we're just, a, we're just a, a, a transition to another place. And eventually we can let you, free bird fly away, right? You, we've done what we needed to do. You're free to fly. You have wings. And so that's a big, that's like a big, that's, that's where we come in and we're not trying, we want to get people who have not been discovered and we want to create a pipeline for them so that naturally, 
like, and not saying too much, but you know how people move in the music industry. There are steps that are taken and we're not trying to circumvent some of those. Those still exist. But if we can get you to that place with the right connections and the right people and just present your work and already say, look, they have a huge fan base, bring them on. Like it's a no brainer. And I think, and so with the discussions in NFTs and web and music and web three and everyone's the last six months been like, well, music's the next thing. How are we going to make it work? And everyone's just like, you know, here's another animated NFT with a soundtrack. And that's like, we're still kind of stuck there. Mm-hmm. And, and, and that's, that is part of where we're trying to, to move forward is be like, imagine a platform where multi versatility, you're a visual artist coming in and you want a soundtrack for your NFT. And now you just go to song and you're like, man, there's like seven artists here unsigned who I could easily get music from. And you're like, boom. And then there, and there you go. Right. So like that's a, that's again, connecting a community and, and using all the different facets of web three, right? Maybe you just need a, a soundtrack to your, your pitch and that has nothing to do with NFTs. Like mm-hmm. there's song, there's a ton of art, artists available. Like, do you want to go to SoundCloud or do you want to be like, look, these people have a fan base. So, you know, just like Son was immediately taken. We took off because we had 10 KTF fan base. Mm-hmm. Imagine starting a project and you're like, well, we know we're going to get this music artist fan base because here they all are on the Son platform. We can see them. They have a, they're pretty, you know, they tend to, they trend towards the top of the top 40 billboard on Son. So this is a great fit and they'll bring an audience with them. So we are really, we want to do yeah. of the music version of, of like what Web3 should be doing is like bring you in, help you to understand the technology driving the whole, give you a heavy inspiration of art, music and culture, and then say, look, the sky is the fucking limit. And damn it, here's some really cool friends right out the gate who are just friends because of the Vesca Pescas crossover demographic. And if you're self-propelled and you are really in it for the right reasons, then I think that, you know, our platform is going to do nothing but generate really cool and, and just people moving, moving through and up and beyond and have a, and just build on that. You know, we got to get past 10,000 of the PFP, just like 10 KTF has to get past their volume cap on the number of PFPs, right? If, if 10 KTF is going to be a call of duty, like they need millions upon millions of, of battle town mode outs, not just the 10 K from these PFP projects. So it's like, you know, thinking bigger picture, that's always on our minds is how can we like, we need, we need to scale this and we have to make sure that from the get go, we're taking in these considerations of scale. Yeah. Well, thank you guys. You guys have a big vision. You guys have a very talented team. You have artists, you have musicians and you have business operators. And so it seems like you guys have really taken your NFT experience in the past year, year and a half and taken the lessons from that and are ready to really materialize that into your own creation. And so we're so excited. We're all holders of, of San ourselves. And so we're excited to see how, how you guys grow this and scale this. And we're going to be supporting you guys along the way. I wanted to end with, if there's anything that we didn't get a chance to ask you, please, uh, this would be the moment to jump in. Yeah, so I mean, the last thing probably that I didn't explain is the IRL element of our project, right? And essentially what we're trying to do is, you know, we're trying to build an ecosystem. So, I mean, my, my dream, my vision is that, you know, let's say you're an artist, you're using our platform, you know, and you're, you know, obviously a part of our community. I mean, there's there's tons of artists, you know, visual, you know, graphic designers on in, in the community. So even like the cover art can come from our community. Right. Mm. Our, and we're do, definitely like, you know, we're also having like this, like entire, like rollout for our merchandise, like slash, like fashion angle that we're trying to do. So, I mean, like we can even make our, your, right. And we can help you with it. Right. That's kind of like what we're trying to build. And then going back to the IRL side, my, I mean, my vision is that we have these kick-ass IRL events and from the top 40, like, let's say billboard chart, that's, you know, the song billboard chart, right. We pick some of these artists and then let them perform live at our own IRL. Cool. Events. That's kind of like what we're trying to do. Uh, obviously along with some like, you know, bigger artists to like, obviously, you know, hype up the hype up our, you know, IRL events. But essentially what we're trying to do is build out these IRL events to really like, you know, celebrate, you know, our community members that's, you know, crushing it on our platform. Right. So we're trying to like, you know, there's so many different like layers and elements that we're trying to like really like execute right now. But again, like Pro said, we're trying, we gotta, we gotta make sure that the first 10 K, you know, obviously like, you know, and, and most people soul buying, right and so that we can really start like getting the ball rolling 
per se. You know, and that's that's what we're really trying to do. Like I think, and 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 you also have to think about this like kind of like this novel idea. The more people soul buying, the supply of the art goes down. So doesn't yep. that make the art more valuable, right? Yeah. So that's another element that we haven't really discussed. But that's that's also kind of like the vision for a soul buying too. It's like, you know, like like for me, I'm gonna soul buying the art that I love that like resonates with me that I'm gonna keep forever, right? So I'm not gonna flip that, right? And I think that's what the beauty of soul buying is. You know, it's like, man, this art represents me. I'm gonna keep it forever. And then that one's gone forever. Like you cannot trade that shit. That, so the more people that soul bind, like there's, there might be only like, you know, 5,000 of the art left. Right. So I think like that's something that I'm really excited about actually, like, cause the soul binding is going to start happening. Um, obviously like once the art, like it's released, we have this whole like rollout for the soul binding, but I'm actually very curious to see how many people like initially soul bind. And we know that's going to be like a, definitely going to be like a, a slow climb for sure. Like, I mean, getting people to like really mm -hmm. understand a concept of soul binding, it's, it's going to take some time for sure. But we're very confident that, you know, throughout time, people are going to get used to it and they're going to understand like, fuck, we're, you know, these guys are giving us a whole bunch of utilities. I got to soul bind this shit. I got to be part of this ecosystem. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Crow, did you have any final thoughts? Mostly I would like to just say thanks to the 10 KTF community for just for being so supportive and, and such a compelling force in our project. I really Hell can't yeah. thank you all enough since day one. Like I, I, we truly don't deserve the kind of love and fanfare that you guys show. So I'm like, I, I feel super humbled and the whole team, you know, I'm saying that on behalf of the whole team, cause we really do, we respect you guys and, and, and girls and we respect the project an awful lot. So with that being said, we would obviously, we love to be part of 10 KTF. So like, you know, that's something that we are definitely like hoping we can bring to fruition for sure. And anything mm -hmm. that the 10 KTF community, any kind of copy pasta or like, <laughs> immense pressure in the discord from the community, towards, like you know, the we new team and those sort of things. Or like, if you guys want to like, maybe kidnap Robin or something and we can take him down to Toast Town, you know, <laughs> maybe not come back until hey, they Crow, sign let's, the well, song. I don't well, know. Am I saying too much? I don't know. Like, but you know, well, let, let's cut the stream and we'll talk about those plans right after this. We'll, we'll go deep dive and figure out how we can get that going yeah. for you guys. <laughs> Do you know people, Atari? Do you have people who have these certain set of skills that we're looking for i can't disclose this on camera but let's talk right after crow we got it we got a lot going on <laughs> I'm sure, man. but yeah for, but what crow said thank you guys so much seriously like i mean i actually like been watching your guys' show so it's kind of like crazy like we're on this right now too like when crow told me last week like yo D uh, damn show wants to you know like have a chat with us i was like fuck yeah let's do this you know i was like super stoked i've been a, i've been an og like real holder too like along with crow from day one mm -hmm. so for me, it's like, you know, one of my favorite projects, like from, you know, forever. So it's like, you know, it's, it's just been, it's been, it's been wild seeing like so many of like people that I even recognize in the grill chat, like, cause I haven't been as active, but you know, I've, I'm always like creeping it in there, you know, but it's just been so yeah. crazy. Like so many of you guys just coming into the server. It's been, it's been really fun for us. Like, I mean, the past like couple of weeks have been like a huge growth for our project and just seeing like really familiar faces and names like it in our like server it's been it's been amazing so really seriously like thank you guys so much like and uh, all that you guys do for real you guys are like my, my favorite people in the web3 space for sure like just even chatting <laughs> you guys you. on here like i just know when we meet rl dude we're gonna we're gonna we're gonna have a lot of fun together so yeah. hell yeah hell yeah <laughs> can't wait. Can't 10k wait. 10 ktf goes deep no matter where we go and so when we find something we like <laughs> we sure. go hard into it so we loved having you guys <laughs> on thank you guys so much for sharing the yeah. vision that you guys have we're excited to get this out to people yeah definitely man thank you guys so much for real thanks y'all really appreciate it yeah and 10 ktf team win son son win <laughs> what's going on you know link this up let's make this happen y'all oh man that dude don't even don't even gas me don't even gas me i'm not gonna be able to sleep it's like five in the morning here don't even don't get me out don't get me all amped right now <laughs> and one last thing i'm gonna say right now so a low key low alpha right now midori and i've been talking a lot the back channels so uh back to back when midori you know what i'm saying i'm gonna say it out loud right now <laughs> <laughs> that's good yeah but that's that's what dude, people have been speculating like so much shit but i'll just tell you now like alpha we've just been talking just as friends and uh we're like trying to do something together you know on a not even like on a like a project thing it's just like yo like i'm a dj you're a dj for like one of my favorite like projects like yo let's do something together that's all we've been really talking about uh nothing too serious but you know fuck like whatever i 
envision, most of the time it ends up happening. So I'm trying to like, I'm trying to figure out how we can do this. Cause like, do I need to make myself an avatar? I don't know. Like I have no fucking idea. <laughs> I have no idea. 